for this hour. Thank you for the love you bestowed upon us and you have come here to listen to my word and how we pray that you speak to each and every one of us. May you help us, Father, to understand and to appoint everything in each and every one of the word from thy mouth. May you help us also to accept every word from thee so that we walk with you and we know and understand what to do most so in these last days. Bless us and guide us that the name be glorified, that the will be done as we proceed with the programs which are ahead of us. Even those who are still in need to be here, Father, we bring them into the able hands, may you open the way so that they will be here before the end of the day. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter number 22. It's a parable of uh, the wedding banquet. And uh, it, was, uh, it was one of the last uh, sermons of Christ in his uh, earthly surgery. Um, this is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22 verse 1 to verse number 14. And Jesus answered and spoke unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Number four, again he sent forth other servants saying, tell them who are bid and behold I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servants and treated them shamefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was angry, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they who were, they who were hidden were not worthy. Go you therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to, bid to the marriage. So those servants went into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man, there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how came you in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at uh, the parable in the book of Matthew chapter 22, we see it's divided into three parts. And uh, the first one, Jesus is calling, and that's why it was a it was a it, it, it was a wedding. It was a marriage for his son. And when you look at the wedding or the marriage which Jesus has prepared, God has prepared. If you go to the book of Revelation, chapter nineteen, chapter nineteen, verse number seven, it says, "Let us." Be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteous of acts of the saints. Verse 9, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they who are called, and to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. Now, we are, 
looking at the marriage uh, the marriage uh, the, ma the marriage invitation and we understand that the marriage invitation you are talking about is about Christ himself he's the son whom the father had prepared a marriage for his son and that's why as we understand that this marriage had to come with invitation and the first invitation as we look at it says, and sent for the servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Now, we are looking at the first uh, group of people, the first group of guests who were invited. And this group, of, the first group of uh, guests who were invited, they refused to come. And uh, as they refused to come, each and every one of them gave an excuse why he should not be there. And uh, because of those excuses, the father himself could not uh, wait for them to do what they were doing because one thing was sure, the date has been set for the marriage, everything was ready and prepared and now it was just upon them to come and join the other guests into the marriage into this uh, wedding and uh, as I look at this uh, first invitation I'm looking it at the aspect of the first group which was called and this first group was the were the Jews because when God uh, had to give the first invitation he sent his servants the prophets and that's why we need to understand from the from, from, from the from, from the first invitation let's go into the book of first second chronicles chapter 20 second chronicles chapter 20 Verse number 20. This is what the Bible says. 20, 20 verse number 20. It says, And they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, just Jeho Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe, it, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. We see now Christ himself, when he, God, when he sent his prophets to call the first, uh, the first group of, uh, of guests, they refused to come. And when they refused to come, we see now the, the only issue which the 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 the, the honor the the the, 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 the honor of the of the of, of the mar of, of the marriage the honor this, this Jesus God Himself was to now to do away with them and that's why as we look at our time it was until uh, when Christ came into this world and when He gave an invitation again He's repeating the same same invitation to the marriage feast. And the invitation was refused by the Jews. And you remember from the beginning of the of the of the Jews of the of, a, of the Jew nation until then, they were the God was still pleading with his people, and he was bringing them back to him. And that's why the message which they were they, 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 they were preached to, they could not accept that message. And why God now when he sent his son Jesus when he came for the marriage for the marriage feast. Still, they could not accept him as the savior and as the one who has who had come to bring life. At that time, when they saw what the message was contrary to their lifestyle, that's when they refused the offer and they refused the message. If you read the book of uh, John chapter number 18, verse number 36, you'll find that Jesus was not inviting them and to this world, but the, 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 the marriage feast was already prepared, not in this world, but in heaven. And uh, as you look at it, that's why John chapter 18, verse number 16, this is what the Bible says. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servant fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. Now, the first invitation was for the Jews. And the Jews were invited for the purpose of inheriting the kingdom of heaven. 
And as we have been looking, and as we have been studying, the only issue which was there, they wanted a king, an earthly king, with an earthly honor. The, a man will bring honor to, back to Israel, and that's why when Jesus is coming, he wanted to divert the minds of the disciples, sorry, of the Israelites, from earthly to heavenly. And that's where the danger is. Until then, the Israelites themselves refused to be connected with God. Because the feast itself, it was God who had prepared. And if it was God who, was to pre to, to, who had prepared, how could it be here enough? And that was the problem with the Israelites. And when God had to send prophets, and that's why in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, we are seeing that God sent the, the, his servant, the prophet. They came and they preached, they gave the message according to the way they had been said. But the Jews still could not accept the message because it was not earthly, it was heavenly. Mm -hmm. What was the problem? The problem is because they, 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 they were connected to the world. They could not believe that this thing, and you know the devil is very cunning. Maybe, if it would have been me or you, we might think that maybe the, the problem would have come from the outside. But remember, as we look from the beginning, the, the devil himself had prepared the Israelites to refuse the message, and that's why when Christ is coming, it is not the, 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 it, it, it's, uh, it's not the heathens who are coming to fight against the truth, but the same, same people who did what? Who lived with that truth? And that's, why the, what, that's what the devil did. We remember those who have read and studied the history, when Titus came to, but not Titus Kulu, when Titus came to, 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 to conquer Jerusalem, what did he do? He was supposed to kill the, 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 the high priest. That time the high priest was called Jada. And when he, he didn't kill the high priest, his soldiers came unto him, unto him and they asked him, why didn't you kill the high priest? He said, no, just wait. And he entered into the temple and he worshipped in the temple. Then he went back home. When he went back home, that's when they, they, that's when they came into an agreement. You can send your children, your sons and daughters, to Greece to come and do what? To come and study. So, when they come and study, they will learn from us. And remember, there was a controversy. And the controversy was, don't go to those people. Those are heathen people. God will not allow us to, our, our, our children to go there. But the, the young men who are there, they insisted and they said, what we are going there to do? We are just going there to study what is good and what is right. What is bad and what is wrong? We leave it there. But remember, the devil had already made a way. When they went to Greece, what happened? When they studied the study of Greece, in the schools of Greece, when they came back, already the devil had prepared those people many, many years. By the time Christ is coming, there was no faith in Israel. That was the problem. And that's why they are fighting Christ. The devil could not come from outside. He had, he had trained the people who were inside. And he had come with a lot of many, many things. So that by the time Christ was coming, he knew how and how to tackle the truth. And that's why Jesus, when he came the first time, even the people whom he had come to save, they could not believe in him. And that's why now, that's when, that's when now Christ... The, the, the Jews, when they refused, the message had to be taken away from them. That was the first calling. In the book of Matthew chapter 22, we see that as the first calling. And that's why verse 3 says, And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Remember, Jesus had already come, and they could not believe him. They could not accept him as the Savior, of the one. And that's why, what, what was the purpose of God giving this message to the Israelites? It was it because they were many? No. What, was it because they were special? No. Let's go back into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 7. This is what the Bible says.
I start from verse 6. I start from verse number 6. For you are a holy people, and to the Lord you are God. What chapter? Chapter 7, verse number 6. Deuteronomy. It says, For you are a holy people, and to the Lord you are God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7, Lord did, Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you are more in number than any people. For you are the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because you will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, God did not call the, Egypt, the, the Israel, Israelites because they were many. And that's why we need to understand it was not the purpose of God for his people to compromise because they were few. The purpose of God was for them to stand by that truth even though it was an unpopular truth. But unto him, these were his people. And that's why the Israelites could not believe and could not understand how this message could be preached unto them at such a time when they wanted to mingle with the world and understand what the world was doing. That's why when Christ is coming to call them, when he sent the prophets, he sent, the, he sent his servants to come, and the Bible says in chapter Matthew chapter 23, Let's go to chapter 23, verse number, verse, num, verse number, number 33. This is what it says. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall use scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood of blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel and to the blood of righteous Abel and to the blood of Zechariah son of, son of Barakia, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Very I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Now we are seeing Abel being killed by his brother. And also, we see in the Second Chronicles, chapter 24, verse 19, that's when Zechariah was killed, between the porch and the altar. So when we look at Christ himself, this was now the first calling, the first generation, and that's when now they are closing the door to the messenger. And they decided now, no, from here now onwards, we are not following Christ. And when Jesus came specifically and told them, this is not my kingdom. That's when the Jews take us a decision. And what decision did they take? Because we have read from chapter 18, verse 36, that Christ, when he was speaking to the Jews, he told them clearly, this is not my kingdom. But they wanted Christ to come and be part of and parcel of this kingdom. But when Christ is speaking unto them, when he told them, this is not my kingdom, what answer did they give? In chapter 19, verse number 15, the same book of John. John chapter 19, verse 15. This is what the Bible says. But they cried out away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. <coughs> then he delivered him therefore unto them to be crucified. The closing of the door to the Jews. The first call of the people who are bidden to come. And they had come for a purpose. And the purpose was, they had in, been invited for, a ma for, 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 for that marriage. And the one who had invited them was none other than God. He sent his messengers, he sent his servants, the prophets to come and preach this gospel to the Israelites. But each and every servant who came,
They wanted to act like, a, like the Hitlers. That's why the first invitation could not be accepted. And that's why, friends, we are also in danger. If we not understand why we are existing in this, in this world, why God had called us as peculiar people, we might not understand the time of our visitation and why we have been invited up as the last church in this world's history. And that's why when the, when the Israelites refused, they crucified Christ and they said, this is not our king. We don't need this man. He's not part and parcel of our generation. He's not the man whom we have been waiting for. And when they crucified Christ, they made a demarcation between them and God. And God had no other choice but to separate with these people. And later, we see the second calling in the book of the same, same verse 4 it says, Again he sent for the other servants, saying, Tell them who are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Verse 4, chapter 22, Matthew. It says, verse 4, Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them who are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. Verse 5 says, But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and treated them shamefully, and they slew them. But when the king heard of thereof, he was angry, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their cities. Now, the second invitation was, the, was for the Christian church. And when God called the Christian church uh, as from that, uh, that one AD, we see that also they had high hopes and expectations. They, had, they were eagerly waiting for the coming of the Messiah. And that's why the apostles came and preached the message of righteousness by faith. And anyway, there, there, was, there has never been a time when God had, had changed his message. The same, same message which was preached unto these people, it is the same, same message which was preached unto Adam when, after the fall. The message of righteousness by faith, it is the same, same message which uh, uh, Enoch preached for 300 years. It is the same, same message you know is coming to preach for 120 years to bring people back to God. But the way the devil could not understand, allow people to understand this message, it is because he knew when God's people will understand this message, they will turn from him and his destination will be decided forever. And that's why, friends, we must be very careful when God is speaking unto us, just as in the days, so shall it be. Because as we look at the message which God had to give unto his people, we are seeing now the second time, the already again, the invitation was ready, and everything was prepared, and the people have been called to go unto the feast. But how many people were ready? And when the Christian movement began, it had high hopes and expectations. No, even the disciples could, uh, themselves could expect another generation of another people after the Christians. And that's why God had to prepare people. When he was preparing the people, the second call, he was, he, was, he was preparing people who will come into the feast and they were truly coming for the purpose of going to that feast. But the problem is, when the preparation for the invitation took long, not because of the, of, the, of the one who had invited, but because of the ones who had been invited. Because if you read the Bible, it says very clearly, everything was ready. If the Christian church in that, uh, at that time would have been prepared, it would have, it, it, it would have been ready. There was, no delay, there was not to be any delay in the coming of Christ to take his church back to heaven. And that's why when you look at ourselves, when you look at the Christian faith, when you look at the Christian age, also it had, it, 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 it had to be again removed from the big picture of God. 
And that's why now we come to the conclusion of this matter. But at that time, when the disciples came and they preached the gospel, you know even when Peter was preaching, he was preaching to the, to, 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 to the Israelites, now to the Christians, but the kingdom of God is nigh. When Paul was speaking, he was preaching to the, to, to the Christians that the kingdom of God is nigh. Each and every person who came at that time, the disciples and the apostles, they were preaching for the coming of the kingdom. But now, where was the problem? It is because people had in their hearts. And that's why, as they came, they had high expectations and high hopes. You know, sometimes when we have been, a, well, when we have been assured something, we want just to come. But when we see the conditions which have been put, that now when we decide now, this was, this not, this was not the place I was supposed to be. And that's when the church became cold. In later years, according to history, they even, they even moved from the day of worship to another day. When they were struggling to uplift Christ, the truth of the matter was they were uplifting the devil because even as we come, uh, when the church is beginning, they were worshipping the, 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 the sab on Sabbath, they were worshipping God in truth and in spirit, but by the end of the day as the church, as the church comes to its end in 1844, the Christian, now, the Christian church, we see it had gone back to papacy. And again what happened? What was the problem within? The false education and that's what the purpose had, purpose had purposed in his part or in her part to bring the false education. And when he brought this false education, we see now it is not the purpose who is struggling to fight against the truth, but the people who had been called. By the time of 1844, the church was dead. And that's why when, when in, the, in, the, in, the book, uh, in the book Daniel the prophet, S.N. Haskell, page 262. The church could not accomplish the, the message which it had been given. And also, E.A. Sutherland speaks very clearly that what the church, what, what, the, what, the, what the apostle, what, what, sorry, what the, 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 where the Jews failed and where the, 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 the Christian church failed, if we not go back to the drawing board and we know and understand where they failed, mm -hmm. we will not also succeed in the proclamation of this message. And that's why <coughs> we see the three angels message. The three angels message and the book of Matthew chapter 22 goes hand in hand. The first message, the second message, if it could not, it could not be understood, the third angels message if it will not be understood by God's people in these days because we could not understand the first, the second, and the third angel. And that's why as we look now, God had to bring another church. The Seventh-day Adventists as from 1844. God had a purpose because the Sunday, the, 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 the Sunday churches failed where they will, have, they, they will have succeeded because they did not follow Christ fully. And that's why they could proclaim the first and the second angel's message. But the third angel's message, they could not proclaim because they could not, the God would not have allowed them to proclaim the message without understanding the purpose and the work of the message. That's why God is raising another generation. And this is the third generation. This is the third calling. And this is what it says in verse number 8. Then said he to his, to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they who were bidden were not worthy. Go you therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king, king came in, in, to, in to see the guest, he saw there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how come, how came you, you in here, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. You see now the bad calling. Already, again, every time he speaks, he says that the, everything is ready. The wedding is ready. 
But they who were, they were, were bidden were not worthy. You see again you are seeing what is lacking here. What have you seen in the book of Revelation chapter 19? The garment. Mm-hmm. The linen garment. garment. What does it represent? Let's go back again into the book of Revelation, friends. Chapter 19, verse number 8. This is what the Bible says. And to her was granted, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the sin. Are you together? Mm-hmm. For the fine line is the, is the righteous act of faith of saints. Now, the only problem is when you go back, where did this uh, line got lost? In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 7, that's where it was stolen. And the one who stole brought another one which was not there. Let's go there. Chapter 3, verse 7. It says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sealed the fig trees together, and made themselves aprons. They knew that they were naked. They knew that they didn't have garment. And that's why now, instead of them now look, waiting and uh, asking for the one who had made the first garment, they went and did what? They made their, made their what? From what? Fig leaves. From fig trees. Fig leaves. Now remember, when Christ was coming, to Jerusalem with the disciples Alikutana Nani the fig tree mm. and uh, at that time ingawa kulikuwa wakati ambapo matunda haya miti haikuwa itoe matunda all the other trees were dry but hii miti ilionekana itwa mzuri inaonekana matawi inaonyesha and at, from far ilikuwa inaonyesha ya kwamba it was ready it had fruits. Mm. But when Christ came closer, and when he came near, he saw that the tree didn't have anything. Better the dried trees outside. Okay. Than this one ambayo kwenye onekana ikiwa na matunda, lakini kafanya nini? And that's why there is a connection between Adam and the tree. Because what did they do? The same, same fig tree, it is the same, it is the, the, the leaves and the leaves here, they are, it is the same, same plan of redemption. Now that's why we want to stand on our own faith. How long shall we, how far shall we go with what we believe is right and what we believe is true? Because what we are doing now, we believe the truth. We know the truth is the truth because we believe in it. But you know, that's not the truth. That was the problem with the Jews. That was the problem with the Christian church. And also it is the problem with us. The truth is the, it's the truth because I believe in it. If I don't believe in it, I don't believe that as the truth. And that's why it has taken long for Christ himself to bring us into this marriage feast because now we are in the, we are the, third, we are in the third invitation. And the third invitation, who have been uh, invited? We, the Adventist church, Remember when Christ is coming, the first advent, already there was no faith in Israel. It was just something now. It was, it was just a, the word the Jews and the Christians, even the time of the 1844. Where was Christianity? Because the world had, the church has mingled with the world. And because the church had mingled with the world, there was no one to stand for the truth, even when Christ is proclaiming this message, those who proclaimed this message in 1844, from that time, the first and the second angels, still they could not be accepted into the church because people thought they were coming with another message. There was no righteousness of Christ in those two previous churches. 
And friends, <clears throat> that's why we need to go back to the drawing board. And we ask ourselves, at such a time like this, how prepared are we for the second coming? Because after the first and the second, the third calling, there will be, no, be no other calling. The first angel, the first and the second angel, after the first and the second angel, after the third angel, the door of probation will be close to the Adventist. And that's where the danger lies. We are very comfortable. We want to believe what we want to believe. We want to do what we think is right. But God has a message. Even the Jews himself, when he was coming, they wanted to compel God to do according to their will. And if he could not go according to the message which they wanted to hear, that's why the, 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 the messengers who had been sent, the, 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 the prophet, were strong. Again, we see the apostles, and even from that generation until now, we still study their history, that at the time of the Dark Ages, many, many people, many Christians were killed. That's why we need to ask ourselves, how long shall it be? Because the Bible says they are cry their blood is crying. But the only thing is when you, well, let's go into the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews, chapter number 11. Verse number 39. This is what the Bible says. Let me start from verse number 34. <coughs> it says, Quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in war, turned to fly the armies of foreigners. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. Yeah. Verse number 39. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. What is delaying this marriage feast? It is us. Because what the, the, there must be a condition also for the invitation. The invitation has to go with the message. The person who had sent these messengers to go and invite, they could not just come. They, must, they have they had to come with condition. And the condition was, you have to come this, this ABCD. And when they refused to come, and that's why the Bible says, some of them went into their businesses, some to their farms, and those who remained, they could not accept to come in. And that's why, friends, as we ask ourselves this question, are we really prepared for the invitation? Because the third generation, the Seventh-day Adventist church, that's why God gave us the message of the third angel, because the, 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 the nominal churches could not proclaim this message because they didn't have the righteousness of Christ himself. That's why from there, in the second angel's message, almost when they were pro ready, to, ready to proclaim the third angel, God could not allow them. And now he gave this message to the Seventh-day Adventist church. As from then until now, why is Christ coming delayed? Because also we are just like the other churches. We are just like the Jews. We are just like the, 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 the nominal churches. And that's why the Protestant churches, church could not stand. Because already the one who was ruling and controlling, it was the devil. If they would have accepted the message in 1844, have you ever asked yourself, from 1831 
1844, God's people were preparing. They were preparing and they prepared. In 1833, it, be, it was the climax of the message. And from there, they were bringing people, they were calling people to the marriage feast. And the people were ready and eager, but those who were coming, they were not ready to sacrifice. That's why at, 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 at the end of it, they refused to come in. And that's why, friends, as we look at our times, 1844 is part of the history we study each and every day. And very few people ask themselves, why did it happen so? Why did God allow such a message to be proclaimed? And it was, it was a false message. Why did he allow Martin Luther to stand and tell people that now Jesus is coming in 1844? Miller. William Miller, thank you. Why did he allow William Miller to stand and proclaim the message of the second coming of Christ in 1844 when God himself in heaven knew that this was, this was not the right message? For all those years, again, at the end of 1844, after the disappointment, we see again now God is raising another church. And that's why God could not allow the church, the Protestant church, to prepare people for heaven because it lacked two things which will never be separated. God's commandments and the spirit of prophecy. The Philadelphia church did not have the Ten Commandments and it did not have the, the, the spirit of prophecy. That's why God could not allow them to, to stand in between them and God. And that's why when it reached 1844 and the people refused to accept these two messages, the righteousness by faith, the character of Christ, that's why now God had to raise another church. And the church which he raised was the Seventh-day Adventist, which until now God had called his people to come in so that they can show the world. But not only by preaching, by character. He's looking for and what he needs is just to reveal his character through us to the world. So that even as the world looks at us, it will say, surely this is a message. And these people are totally different from us. And that's why we are in danger. As from that time until now, how many people will, be, will prepare themselves? And now, as we look at the end, is Christ coming to bring another, an, another movement? That is another, that's another major question we need to ask ourselves. Is Christ bringing another movement? Because as we look at uh, in that last verse, verse 11, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a, there a man who had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how came you in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. When God called the, the, the last generation, when he called the, now the Adventist church, the Bible says that they came good and bad. And when they were there, the Bible says that there was a man who didn't have a garment. And we have seen the garment represent the righteousness of Christ. We, have, we understand that when we talk about the garment of Christ, it is only Christ and Christ alone. The book of uh, John chapter 12 verse 32 says, When I be lifted up, I bring all men unto myself. So the purpose of the church is to uplift Christ, and when Christ is uplifted, he will bring people unto himself. And that is the purpose of each and every institution which have been set up, set up in, the, in, 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 the, in the world by the church. If it is not Christ, it is, if it, it is not for the purpose of lifting Christ, and that's why we have a problem, and from here now, as we look at it, now God is not looking and is not waiting for the entire church to be revived. What God is looking at, he is looking now at the individuals, because remember the first church, the whole generation was wiped away. Mm. Again, now the second generation of the of the of the of the, of the, of the, of the new Protestant church also was wiped away. Now, when we come at, at the third generation, it is not now God is not looking at the church; He is looking at individuals yeah. because now He is picking each.
each and every person as an individual. And that's why when you look at it, God, Jesus now, what the Father now is doing, he is going unto each and every person inside the church. He's looking at so and so. He's going to each and every person, each and every individual. How is your character? Do you have the garment? Are you representing Christ in your life? And that's why, because of that, Christ now is not coming again now in the same same, but remember, it is in the same same house. The same same people who are called, now is on the road, because now we are looking at the child. Many people are looking at the child, but Christ is looking at the individuals from the same place, and God is very particular in what he's doing in these last days. We need to stand, and you need to understand now the church of God the way it is. To wait for the entire church to be revived, that time will never come. God is speaking individuals, and that's why it says, there and there, he's looking for the ripe fruits. And those ripe fruits are the ones which are ready. If you are not ripe at such a time like this one, if you go to the book of John chapter 15, you will see what, what Jesus was speaking and what, what, what he wanted to mean when he was speaking about the grapes. You know we were not, we were not part and parcel of the kingdom, but now he, we have been joined. It was a must. It was, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was a must for us to be engraved into the into the into the into the into that in the name, grip. But we are just, we need, to, we need to reflect the character of Christ in our lives so that at such a time when the world is looking for people who are totally different, they need to come to the church and they will ask questions, why are these people peculiar? And when they ask, there will be answer. When you go to the book of the, the book of the Self Ages, it says very clear in the chapter have you seen his star? When God, when God, when, when, when the angel was guiding the, those people from the east, he guided them unto the door of the temple in Jerusalem. But while they were looking, they could not find someone. They could not, they could not get people in the mood of that a savior has been born. And that's why when they are going again to, 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 to Herod, it was not now God was leading there. That's why many people are getting lost because we don't reflect the character of Christ in us. When they come looking for the true faith, what do they get? And that's why they move. They go to other denominations. And it is not God who is guiding them. God had to guide them to the church. And that's where the Spirit of God had to guide them because he knew that's where the king message was to be proclaimed the birth of the king. Even right now, friends, God is not looking for churches. God has a church. And that church must stand at such a time like this. And why, if the church, the, 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 Bible is very, the, the pen of inspiration is very clear, that God will choose people from the church and he will lift them. They will proclaim the message. And the third angel's message, when it comes to an end, which message are we entering now? And that's why now, in verse 6 to 14, the Bible says, Men, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now that's why we come into the proclamation of the, of the message. We come at the climax of the message, that even though we refuse to have the character of Christ in us, God will still choose people. He will have faithful people in this Adventist faith. He will have faithful people in this church who will stand and they will truly proclaim the message not according to their, to, to, to their thinking, but according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why it says now, not like the past two calling, but this one says for many are called but few chosen. Remember they went and brought each and every person, the good and the bad. When they came into the church, when they were in, now the time of revival and reformation when it came, very few people were found faithful. And those people who are found faithful are still in the church. And that's why very few were chosen. And the few who had been chosen by Christ himself, they had to stand 
it doesn't matter the number. What matters is whom are they proclaiming? Whom are they preaching? They had the character of Christ and they had the garment which was purposed for the wedding. Friends, you need to understand that just as it was in the days, so shall it be. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse number 5, number 6, sorry, let's read from there. 1 Corinthians, chapter 10. This, this is what the Bible says, verse number, number 6. Let me start from verse number 5. Chapter 10, 1 Corinthians, verse number 5. It says, But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were thro- overthrown in the wilderness. Verse 6. Now, these things were our examples, to the intent we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages are come. You see, now the same, same history will be repeated. And when it will be repeated, and let me tell you, friends, in the time of the, of, of, of the captivity of Babylon, was there a church? In Babylon, yeah, there was a church. But there is nowhere the church is being mentioned. Even when that time came for the persecution of God's people, the church was not ready to stand for those three young men. They stood on 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 themselves. They had to stand with this faith on their own. And that's why it is only the three who are standing when the rest have decided to to, to worship the the, the, the word, the Bible the God of Babylon. And that's why we need to understand, now you need to know that you have been called as an individual. You have been called by God as an individual so that you will proclaim the message, you will stand for the truth. And that's why page 57 of education says, even if the heaven falls, sometimes you can stand by the truth until now you think even God himself is not on your side. But let me tell you friends, that's the time you need to stand. Because at the time, we are, the time which is coming ahead of us, we need to understand it is a very serious issue that the church itself. <clears throat> and that's why in the book of Ezekiel chapter 8, let's go there. There is something important there. Ezekiel chapter 8. Verse number... 16. This is what the Bible says. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Which temple is this? Was it a temple in Babylon, a temple in Greece, or a temple in Jerusalem? A temple in Jerusalem. And remember, this temple itself, he saw God's people worshipping the sun, the 25 elders. What does 25 represent? 25 represents the, 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 the completeness of the church. That's why each and every church, to be a church, to be organized as a church, it, has, it must have, have how many members? And remember today, the church itself will worship the sun worship. And that's why when Jeremiah or Ezekiel was looking, he saw the 25 elders. You know when we signed that thing last year? Which one? That we signed there in Mimini, the, the end of protestantism. Mm-hmm. Whatever, what was it? What was the purpose and what did it mean? We worship the word. 
softness. And that's why Ezekiel, when he was looking, he saw the 25 elders. Turning their back to the temple and worshipping the sun. And that's why when now Christ comes the second time, we need to understand he must come and bring up people. People who have never worshipped. Remember even in the time of, Jer of Elijah in, in Israel, Elijah thought he was the only remaining prophet. Because the church had gone. And if you go into that book, Testimonies, Volume 3, they are Volume 3, go and study very carefully. When Elijah was coming back after those three and a half years, he's finding even the, even the, the, the altar of the Lord itself was totally destroyed. And he built it again. God is building the same, same altar which was broken down in the same, same place with the same, same purpose of bringing God's people back to the true worship. Amen. And that's why now the third calling must bring people, many people will leave the church and many people will come because the few will remain, they will stand true to their calling and they will stand to be counted together with God. Amen. And that's why friends now, it is not upon time to look at the general conference, the division, the union, the conference, because the entire church has turned to the sun worship. Now it is upon you and I to say now, if I'm truly going to stand, if I'm be, I'll be among the few will remain, how many people will I bring to Christ through the character which I reflect? Not my own character, but the character of Christ. Because we come from different backgrounds. And the different back backgrounds you are talking about, I was born, you know, even today you ask someone, why are you, have you done this? You know I was born be like that. That's how I am. You know I'm a Luo, I'm a Luo, and this is what Luo we believe. I'm a Kikuyu. That's why if you go into the, into the parable of the, of, the, of the ten virgins, the Bible says they came from other places. They came from other denominations. They came from other traditions. And when they came into the church, when they came to eat the bridegroom, they came with the characters which they, they, they had there. And that's why there was a problem. That why, that's why there was a delay in the coming of the bridegroom. But friends, the bridegroom is coming this time. Amen. And he's not coming to pick the... Now to, to say, now this church is fallen, do away with it. What he's coming to do, he is coming to pick the right. Amen. And that's why we need to stand, we need to reflect the character of Christ himself. In the, even in the, in, in the time of Daniel, in Babylon, there was still a church, but the church could not stand for the truth. It was only those three young men who said, we know this is the Sabbath day and this is Sunday. We can't worship on Sunday, we better die than worship him on Sunday. But the rest of the church members had to go down to their knees to worship on Sunday to save their lives. Mm. The third calling, friends, is very totally, very different from the, from, from the first two. And that's why the question comes here. How shall we stand? Because the time is almost over. The time is up. The world is prepared for the coming crisis. But God's people are not prepared. And that's why we need to understand what we need to do at such a time like this is to prepare our souls and to prepare the world for the coming of the Messiah. Jesus is coming. And now this is why it says, very few have been called. Who are the few? Now from the same, same story, we now come and see another coming up. And the coming up is the 144,000. Many have been called into the Adventist faith. But how many, few, how many have been chosen? Few. God is now picking from this church. And is bringing up people who will stand for the truth. And those people are the ones who will stand at such a time to proclaim the message because they did not define themselves with the women. Who are the women? The nominal churches. The fallen churches. And that's why if Christ could not accept the message of the churches, then how could, it, how could he accept the message now? Because many things we believe comes from those churches. Even the education we are, we are teaching, 
Even what we are studying in the churches, whatever we are doing, it is coming from the women. And those are the women now who are doing what they want to do. And that's why how in the book, in the, in the same book, Revelation chapter 13, it is very clear. Many, many people will worship the beast. Mm. Not knowingly. Even some of us knowingly. But now the problem is, it says only those whose names are written. Those are the only people. And when I look at myself, I look at the faith which we, believe, we have, and I look at God's people right now. How many will be prepared? Because now the last calling, before we proclaim the message of Revelation chapter 18, we must understand and we must stand true to the message of Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. Those who are, who are proclaiming the message of Revelation 18, they must stand and they must fulfill each and every message in the book of Revelation chapter 14. And those people will not be men. Because the Bible say, has I've said already in the, in the book we have read in Deuteronomy chapter 7, not because you are many. How many people are, are we baptizing today in the church? Many. But what does the Bible and the pen of inspiration say? We want to bring many, many, many who are unconverted and they come. Instead of now us doing, telling them this is what we are supposed to do, now they are controlling us. Because where? They are converted. So we just say, you just come, you just be. And that's why God now is looking for people who will stand just as those young men stood in Babylon. Just as Ezekiel saw the church worshipping the sun. Don't think that now we are still somewhere. We are safe. Friends, we are not safe. No. We can't be silent because the message which we need to proclaim, Ezekiel himself, when he saw, he, had, he, he, he knew, and he knew that this is the truth, and this is what I'm supposed to stand for, because it is the truth. And he knew the kind of people he was dealing with. And that's why, friends, when God is calling now the people in this last generation, the people who will stand true to their calling are the only people who follow the Lamb, but that's whoever he called. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. They follow the Lamb of us And if you are not part of that, it will be very difficult for us to understand the message of righteousness by faith. This message the devil has used each and every way to make sure that no one will accept it. Even those who understand it, even those who believe in it, but they believe in it half-heartedly. And that's why the message will be repeated. And God is repeating the message even in these last days. And this is the end of the ages. We are standing at the border of the heavenly canon. And because the Israelites refused to hear the message, because the, 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 Christian, the, the Protestant churches refused, the only thing now remaining, the Adventist church must stand true to its calling. But don't wait for the entire church to stand. It is upon you and upon me. And the only thing we will stand is by accepting Christ in our lives, not by the preachings, but by the character which will reveal into our lives to the world. That's when the people of the world will realize that surely these are people who are following the Lord. We are using a lot of money, but what we need to know, even where we are, just by small, small things, even in our families, when the character is revealed of Christ, even at our workplace, when the character of Christ is revealed, even as we walk, when the character of Christ is revealed, we will understand and the one will know, surely these are the people whom we are looking for. Friends, if our message will not be different from the other churches, there will be no need of them coming to us because they will say, why should we go on to them and we have one? the same thing, we believe the same message, we must be different. And the difference of the message is that Christ be revealed in us. That's why as we look at that second time of Christ, as we wait for the refreshment, Christ is calling each and every individual. At such an hour like this, at such a time like this, when the door of probation is almost closing, when the last call is being called, is being given, 
we need to understand that we have been called as an individual, not as a church. The book Prophets and Kings, page 364, it is saying that Christ is waiting for a certain number. And he's the only one who knows the number. He's waiting for a certain number. I don't know how many people are remaining. They might be a million, they might be a thousand, they might be a hundred, they, maybe two, maybe five, maybe ten, but he's waiting for a number. And that's why we need to strive to be among the number. And that's why we need to pray and plead with God because the time is not on our side. And we need always to understand, if not now, not now. The third calling, few. Many have been called, but few have been chosen. And if the few have been chosen, are you among the few? Am, am I among the few? Because uh, we need to understand the, the purpose of the Adventist faith. We need to understand we are not, we are not supposed to be to, 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 to proclaim this message. But now because the first and the second batch refused, we have been given this opportunity to reveal the character of Christ, friends. And if we reveal the character of Christ, Christ will lead us and he will guide us. Even at the time of crisis, still Christ will stand with us. It doesn't matter how long it will be, but what matters is when we believe and we understand it is Christ who is leading us, we will never be shaken in this faith. May God help me, and may God help each and every one of us, and may we understand the purpose of our calling. May we understand why we have come at such a time like this. May we not be like that man who was called, who was asked, what are you doing without here, without a garment? You know there are so many people here without garments in the, in, in the Adventist faith. They just came because they, were, they, they had been invited. And you know, karamu ni mahali kila mtu anatakanga kukimbia. Ukiitua karamu kila mtu anataka kuingia. And that's why many came without knowing there were conditions. And again remember when the other, the, the, the parable in the book of Luke yule ambaya likuja akaurizwa is your friend. You know, by calling someone a friend, that's to say you know him. You have been together. You have been even walk, been working together. But Christ is, is, is asking you, friend. Are you a friend of Christ? Yes. But at such a time like that, will you still be a friend of Christ? May God help us as we contemplate about our future. We need to understand about it. I like those words from George, George, George Wright. When he says we need, as we contemplate about the future, we need to understand, to understand the past. It is upon each and every individual. The work which we have been given, it is a work which we need to do at such a time when there is an open door. And if you will not do it right now. You will never do it again. The world is waiting. Christ is waiting. And he will close his work very soon. As the angel prepares to go back to heaven. How many of God's people will know that the time has come when we are closing the work? The time is short. But we have many people to reach. The third call was more important even than the first and the second. Because now, what would he, what would he have done? Kama chakula tayari meandaliwa, na watu wa meitu wa mekata, nilini ambatu wa ngefani. Dio mana akachagua watu, na akawalete, na akawaigiza. Lakini sasa wakiwa ndani, wakaza kufanya ni. Remember, the first first one and the second one, they were calling, they were being called from the outside. Now after the third has been, have come in, now the, he's, he's, he's taking people from the house to where? God help and God save us. He be among the ones who remain. And then we will be in the feast because Christ
Christ is standing at the heart of each and every one's heart. If you are open, you become open. If you don't refuse, you have to be. And if you need, what happens?